Koala. Hi, this is Marek from Elf Audio, and this video is about the new mixer and effects add-on for Koala Sampler. So the way you access it is if you go to the perform section, there's this new little bit of text down here saying mixer. And if you press it, up it jumps. And here we are, we've got, we've, we've got four channels, four buses, I should say, A, B, C, and D, and the main. So all the sounds go, you can send a different sample to each of these, and they all get mixed into main via the perform effects. Um, so, yeah, maybe the first thing I should show you is if I play the music without having used the mixer, you can see everything is coming into the main output. So that's where samples go by default. So you can route them through these, these other channels if you want. And the way you do that, so we go back to the sample page. So there's our kick. I'm going to put the kick onto bus A. And that's, if you see in the, in the what used to be called the EQ tab is called the mix tab now. Um, so yeah, there's a drop down there and you can set which bus you want it to go to. So I'm going to set that to go to bus A. And then I've got this um, sort of vocal pad sound and I'm going to set that to go to bus B. Uh, and I've got three drums. So I'm going to send those to bus C. Bus C and bus C. And then finally I've got this bass sound. I'm going to send it to bus D. And now when I play it, you can see it all goes individual buses and, and now you can just mute, mute the bass or just add the kick or whatever and then yeah what's really nice about these mute and solo buttons down here is that you can drag them so if I press down on the solo and drag my finger um, kind of stole that from logic but um, and likewise with the mute you can mute things out and then what's really nice is you can bring them back with a swipe yeah, so that's how you root sounds. And another nice thing is if you tap on where it says bus A, for instance, you can type in a new name for the, oops, I don't think we need Cyrillic. Um, um, so you can rename each of your buses. And if I go back into this drop down, you'll see that what was called bus A before is now called kick. So it's like a nice um, little helpful thing. I'm just gonna rename all of these. And obviously, every mixer has faders. And each channel also has a level meter, which is really useful. Uh, you can see when it goes red, that means it's, it's peaking, uh, which is important on the main output, because if you're peaking on the main output, then it will clip when you're exporting. And if you turn a sound down, and you want to reset the value of the fader back to zero dB, back to normal, you just double tap it. So it's like how much it's penning. Um, and then the stereo control lets you basically kind of bypass the penning. And it just sort of uh, acts as a tremolo. So you can create really nice sort of throbbing effects. Um, you can also sync to the tempo. So uh, if you press this little um, note button that lets you do it, it's quite a sort of classic thing. But for now, we'll just turn it off. And give ourselves a nice sort of classic uh, auto pen effect. If you don't like that effect, you can drag it to the bin, much like sequences and samples. Uh, but we, we're going to put that back in. Um, and yeah, obviously you can drag to rearrange. So if you want, if you want to put this on a, you know, let's add another effect. Let's say, I don't know, yeah, drive. So you've got the distortion. And you want to put the auto pan before the distortion, the drive, I should say. You, you can do that by moving it around, or you can move things to other channels. So maybe put the drive. 
drive on the on the uh, kick. Um, and then maybe we shall give it a little bit of a high cut, which is kind of almost like the EQ for the channels, but you can really cut things a lot more um, aggressively, should we say? So there, there we've got a kick and a effect on the vocal. I should also say that um, you, you can bypass effects by just pressing the little red button in the top left hand corner of each effect. So let's go through a few of these effects. Um, okay, so one that's quite nice is the phaser. Um, and it's got this visualization and, and when you change the parameters of the effect, it changes the, um, I guess it changes the visuals to try and sort of match up with what you're hearing. Um, so that's the phaser. And what else have we got? Um, pitch shifter, which is quite fun. Although I should warn you that on uh, older or lower spec phones, the pitch shifter will uh, take up a lot more CPU power. That's why I've got this low, medium and high quality option. So now you've got, this is the high quality one. Um, so you can hear the low quality really sort of does struggle, but it, it's a nice effect for certain things. Um, and like just, I might as well point out that it says here at the very top left of the mixer, it says CPU 35%. And that is basically how much CPU, how much of your processor, the mix that all of the audio engine inside Koala is using. And like right now it's saying 35%. And I think it's just because I'm, I'm recording everything. Uh, it's usually much lower because all of these effects they're much, um, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're very efficient basically, so uh, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't use up a lot of your CPU. Um, I probably should mention that there's no way to insert AUV3 effects into this. This is just internal plugins and that means it's going to be the same on uh, iOS as Android. So yeah, uh, let's do some more effects. Uh, a nice effect on the master is a limiter. Like you can see it's clipping, but if I put the limiter in, uh, it stops clipping. And here we can see there's the, the input volume, GR stands for gain reduction, and then we've got the output volume. And this is a look ahead limiter, so it puts a, an imperceptible delay of about three milliseconds. Uh, to basically, well you can see it just says there, three milliseconds in the attack. Um, uh, and that is in order to turn the volume down very quickly, but not so quickly that it starts really distorting the sound. So it's, it's a nice limiter and you won't notice three milliseconds, I promise. It's, it's a very standard thing to do with a limiter. Um, so that's one effect. Another effect that I really like, that I was going to release as a separate plugin, but uh, it was actually just much easier to put it into Koala. It's called Bit Cooker, which is kind of like a bit crusher, sample rate reducer, so you can turn the sample rate like really all the way down to 800 hertz, which is like very, very low, um, which is like, you know, good for some things. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll set it to, I don't know, 27 and a half, because that's like the SP1200 or whatever it's called. Um, and the bit depth again, you know, you can go all the way down to three bits. We'll stick it up to 12. And then the, the jitter effect is kind of like, um, I can't really explain it without drawings, but I guess you can just hear it, like, it sort of like fuzzes everything. It sort of works better when you turn things uh, to really harsh settings. Yeah, here, here you can hear kind of like a ringing in the background, and then when you turn the jitter up, it kind of like smooths it out with some noise. But let's, uh, let's get this back to somewhere a bit more sensible. Another effect I really like on the master is this one called Warble, which sort of simulates um, a vinyl turntable wobbling. It doesn't simulate the sort of tonal characteristics, but it, it does the sort of wow and flutter. And like one really nice feature is if you put your finger down on the record, it, it stops the record. Um, and I promise one day I'll make it so you can scratch it, but you can't at the moment. And the little secret is, the closer your finger is to the middle of the record, the faster it stops. It's quite subtle. But yeah, there's parameters to play around with that. 
Um, so what other effects? Oh yeah, another one that's quite cool is the compressor. So maybe we'll put that on the bass. Uh, compressor. So you can see this is like a standard sort of compressor knee diagram. Uh, I'll just uh, adjust it a little bit. Um, so I've turned down the threshold to make it kick in a bit more. And uh, yeah, another thing to show with this is it has that, that cool graph you see on lots of like fancy compressor plugins. So you can really see that it's doing, the compressor's doing the work. Like you can see that the, the red line here is is basically what the gain reduction is doing, like pulling the volume down uh, just basically after the transients because of the attack. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, like a, a, a reverb called Freeverb. It's like a quite a famous algorithm that's, uh, it doesn't sound amazing, but it's, um, it's very low power. Uh, so it'll preserve your CPU. And I've even put, um, a stereo button so you can switch between mono and stereo if you need to save uh, processing power and then I'll mute it you can you can go quite long tails with the reverb as well but we'll just stick it down to somewhere like that um, okay oh yeah another thing that I think a lot of people will appreciate is the sidechain so now what we can do is if I solo these two, you can hear it a bit better. Um, it's taking the volume of the kick channel. See where it says source. That's saying which source channel do you do you want to take your side chain from? Like where are you getting your side chain from? And then it applies it to the pad sound um, by basically turning the pad down by the volume that the kick is giving it. So yeah, I mean. You, you have to play with these settings to really sort of get it to to sound exactly how you want and get the right timings but you can do some really nice quite trippy lo-fi things with this um yeah uh and then what's another effect like i mean you, you also do get the eq so if i put um you get that basically a channel eq so you can you can do the same thing as you do with just a single sample with, with entire channels and then we have um the mic which is cool it, it basically uh basically it's a way to plug your own microphone or the microphone of your device into the mixer and then you can apply effects it's really fun but i'll let you guys and girls all explore uh, that sort of stuff um there's a delay which is quite nice maybe it's not the best thing to put on a, a bass channel i'm just going to make make some space for it in our um pad section so you can uh, press this button the two circles that's kind of like the universal symbol of stereo so then you get two delays and you can um you know fix them where you want it's got tempo sync if you if you want that and then this is like a filter so what the feedback is going through you can you can make it so the sound sort of disappears into the into the sort of more treble end of things um i don't know if it's possible to hear oh yeah there you go you can kind of hear it sort of the sound gets darker as it it sort of disappears into the distance um and then up here it gets sort of very much brighter and you can this is like an xy pad so you can you can play with the frequency and the width of this filter um there's another kind of delay um maybe i'll put it on this channel on the kick i mean it's the worst sound you could possibly put a delay on probably but it's just just for purposes of demonstration which is the tape delay which has this slightly cooler visual um uh, it's like the delay except it just has a bit of nice sort of tape saturation y sort of uh, effects in the feedback loop and the feedback really does get quite extreme and you can hear it starting to saturate and distort uh, and this does have a filter also that you can you can move and it shows you the nice graph um, uh, and the other thing that it has is this sort of like again like the wow and flutter like the warble effect uh, so if I turn it up it might be quite hard to hear on this effect maybe we'll stick it on back on this uh, oh, there you go you can kind of hear it on on the um on the vocals 
Um, it does take some sort of playing with to get a nice, nice sound. That's like very, very extreme. But uh, yeah, it's it's a nice effect, and I feel like the visual kind of helps you understand because this circle that's spinning around, every revolution is like how long the delay is. So right now it says 662 milliseconds. So this ball is actually going round once every 662 milliseconds, and the number of these concentric lines it corresponds to the feedback so it's kind of like how many how many repeats are there and then the more you wobble it the more wobbly it gets um yeah yeah i'll i'll, I'll get rid of that for now uh yeah i think that's that's all the effects i wanted to show um but that like i said there, there are more in there and there's going to be a lot more. I've got so many ideas to put loads more. And again, I need to, to mention this This doesn't have... Uh, you can't put AUV3s into this, but it will work. Like when you're using Koala as an AUV3, you can use these effects inside Koala for sure. Um, and yeah, another thing that I have to also caveat is it's, it's not free, it's an add-on. But... Um, yeah, like basically that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and can't wait to see what you do with it.